I'm delighted to say that, well, one of our heroes, Rick, joined us now. It's so Aww. nice to see you, Rick. No, so nice to be Honestly. back. It's always great and, fun. And you're cooking for us today. I know. So you... Well, I'm doing a, a, a coconut treat. curry from um, prawn curry. <laughs> hope you like your prawns. We but, do, I mean, it's through, very much. It's from um, Calcutta or Kolkata. That, yeah. Just seeing you there with Floyd was just the first... It was your first TV performance yes. appearance. What do you ma I mean, Floyd was so interesting, wasn't he? He was... Like, no-one well, really liked him. He was kind of, like, quite rock and roll, really, wasn't he? Well, he, he was. <laughs> I, I think he brought sort of rock and roll into cooking. Yeah. Really. I think he did us all a great favour, cos it's sort of like... I guess in some ways, sort of being a singer and um, being in a rock and roll band, it's sort of about bringing pleasure to people, and that's what cooking is. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's sort of... Um, well, it's show think, business, isn't it? It's show business. people go into your it's, restaurant... It's a tough they... old scene yeah. in, in kitchens, but there's a bit of rock and roll about it too, you know? It's sort of... Uh, I just reminded, actually, my first series, um, I'm in the, in the kitchen, actually, during a service, and I'm going off on one, saying, like, it's, like, crazy. It's like the Second World War. It's, like, <laughs> stuff coming at you all the time. <coughs> I mean, it's so hard to film a series anyway, and then to be working, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get on with the crew at the time? Well, I've always loved crews. You know, I still do. Do you know the real reason I still do TV is because I love the, the crew I the work banter, with? The, the banter. The banter. And also, when you finish work... Have a drink. You have a drink. Yeah. And you always look forward. We always used to say at 5.29... The, t the toys have been put away yes. and we're going to have a Go beer. Go have a drink and yeah. a meal. I've met a few people that have been working with you down the line and what they always love is they, they've never eaten better on a trip in my entire life. Oh, that's oh, nice of them. You never and, know. <laughs> and, yeah, there's something very kind of special about that, isn't it? Because especially when you're on the road with a small crew and they become, like, properly part of your family. They are. And become your friends. You know, it's, like, it's like going on holidays with your family, yeah, I always is. think, you know, because we know each other and we, you know, we have tiffs. But it, they're not serious, cos we know so exactly true. how we all operate, you know? So true. So let's go back to where it all began. Yes. How did the nightclub and freeze-dried curries <laughs> end up with Rick Stein? It's just... Well, I mean, it, I, I, I took over with my best friend, Johnny, who took over this club in Padstow in the 70s, this was, and um, <laughs> we had a late licence that went on till one o'clock in the morning. And in those days, that was re in some sort of rural part of yeah. Cornwall. It was unheard yeah. of. Yeah. And the licence meant we had to produce food, and a, 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 a substantial meal. What, in order to have alcohol in there? Yeah, because it, oh, okay. it was a supper licence. So yeah. the supper for us oh. were these free... free were well, you a cups. chef at the time or not? No, I had been a chef when I left school, but I'd forgotten all about it. And, I mean, these curries were terrible, but quite a few <laughs> of the lo locals really liked them. I don't know if you remember them. I think, I think they're called no. uh, Vesta curries. And what do you do? do you, is it like a add powder? Add water, Alison. Add water no, and boil. It. Sounds lovely. <laughs> but there's a, there's, I love that. When you go to a, a nightclub or a big pub or something and yeah. and to get around the licensing, there's a pub in Stockwell called The Swan, big Irish pub. Yeah. And they used to have this, like, lazy... Uh, was it Lazy Susan or Dunwaiter? One well, Dunwaiter. And then you'd, you'd open this hatch and loads of sausage and chips would come Stop out it. about 12 o'clock at night. It was the most that fun. That was it. That exactly. was the same thing. So then how did that end up being the first restaurant? Well, I mean, it was just, I suppose... Things happen to you for a reason. That's what my wife Sass always says. And we got closed down because we had this had this nightclub. Both me and Johnny were very green behind the ears. We couldn't keep order, really. And, and all these fishermen were coming in, unused to a late license like this, getting inebriated. <laughs> and there were lots of fights. And eventually, the really? police, the police <laughs> objected to our license. That's Stein's place again. <laughs> oh, come on. And I was declared not a fit and proper person to hold a license. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? And, but then, about four years later, the inspector that, that had closed us down, yeah. was instrumental, invited me to tea. And he just said, we felt so sorry for you because you were obviously very nice boys and you had yeah. no clue. And I said that was the best thing you did to us because basically, as a result of us being closed down, I opened a restaurant and the rest is sort of history in my terms. You know, it was sort of like it became not an instant success, but it was successful pretty soon. And, uh, and that's why I took to cooking. So it's not like I was you know, hell-bent on being a great a chef. chef. I did it because I needed the money. And the rest is history. Yeah. You've been making <laughs> successful shows ever since. And now you've got this successful series. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, that was just because I, I sort of came to the conclusion that actually you can't talk about British food as being like roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, fish and chips, because there's so many different influences coming into the it's country. It's changed, now. hasn't it, it over has the time? Changed. So I just decided to do this journey around the country just trying all different types of cuisine. So lovely. 
And I love that, because for me, like, working on... One of the thing, lovely things about working in a show is you meet so many chefs from different places and you tell it a, a country's history by its food, you know, it's in so many ways, and migration and, and how those kind of... See, April there, it's how those, how those sort of... Uh, foods have come to be part of the, you know, of the nation's story and the character, right? It is, that's absolutely it. And I mean, I, mean, I think there's... One of the things that, in, that I drew from it, really, is that I think there's quite a lot of things going wrong in the country at the moment, but actually, I think, in food terms, it's very positive. Yeah, there's a lot you know? going right. There's a lot going right. And there's, I think, really, when, you, when you're sharing food with people, you, you haven't got... To, you don't want to be sort of aggressive with them. You want to be sort of like... And so you always have good conversations. That's, I think, why my series have worked so well, because wherever I am, people want to talk about yeah. their own mm. food. You and know? it's those characters that stick in your mind. Did anyone really resonate with you on your travels? Well, certainly in this particular series, I just had this wonderful time in Morecambe in Lancashire. There was these two people, one who I met 20, 20 years ago doing potted shrimps, but this fantastic guy on a tractor going right out to <laughs> a Morecambe Sands, about four or five miles. Oh, my goodness. The thing about it was his tractor. It was so rusty and old. <gasps> and I was saying, it was called Ray, and I said, Ray, do you ever sort of worry when you're out there, you will break down? He said, oh, yeah, we do break down occasionally. <laughs> and I'm thinking, the time... I know. You know the time. And he just fix it there, Yeah, it? yeah. And it's just... He just really touched my heart because he's such a sort of British character. And just and, very briefly, you've got the tour as well. Tell us yeah, yeah, well, I'm just doing a stage tour, actually, because I'm, I'm sort of quite... I, I, I just like an audience. It's funny, you know, because I'm a chef. You're good Why with would people, I like though. An audience? You are good with but, people. But I, I, I just, you know, I'm sure you've felt it, that when you get a great reaction from people in an audience, it just spurs well, you on to do yeah. sort of good things. And I'm so looking forward oh, to it. An that. evening with you would be great. Uh, so, listen, Rick Stein's Food Stories continues Monday to Friday on BBC Two at 6.30. Catch up available on BBC iPlayer. Tickets all sale on sale now for an evening with Rick Stein on the UK tour. And Rick is hanging around with us. Yeah.